My name is Muinat Bell. I also go by Bicey, so um, some may know me as Bicey Bell. And I am director of the Photoacoustic and Ultrasonic Systems Engineering Lab, or the Pulse Lab. And in the Pulse Lab, we integrate optics, acoustics, and robotics to design innovative biomedical imaging systems to address clinically relevant problems. And we interface these systems that are developed in the Pulse Lab with real patients to translate the technology to uh, clinical practice. And some of the applications that we're working on include developing systems for minimally invasive surgeries. We're also innovating on the signal processing side to develop novel beam formers to improve image quality. And in terms of optics, we're developing specialized light delivery systems to make our photoacoustic systems compatible with surgical tools to enable photoacoustic guided surgery. So photoacoustic imaging is a technique that is often compared to lightning and thunder. So you can imagine that you have lightning, uh, a lightning bolt striking through the sky the light separates the air surrounding it, causing it to rapidly expand and contract and generate the loud, roaring boom that you hear when you hear thunder. And so that concept of light and sound happens on a, a much smaller scale in photoacoustic imaging inside the human body, where you transmit light to a structure of interest like a blood vessel. The blood vessel has a higher optical absorption than its surroundings, and so it absorbs that light. It undergoes thermal expansion and it generates a sound wave that can be detected with conventional ultrasound technology. And we use this to make images of a whole range of different tissues or structures, like metal, for example, that might have a higher optical absorption than its surroundings. So pituitary tumors um, is just one example of uh, an anatomical case where you have the tumor located very close to these major arteries that you don't want to injure. You want to avoid these blood vessels. They're so close, so the likelihood of causing injury, especially for the novice surgeon, is uh, very prevalent. And when that injury does occur, mortality rates can be as high as 40%. And so we want to avoid cases like this by giving the surgeon uh, the ability to see these major anatomical features at the time of surgery and avoid them at the time of surgery and avoid any complications that might have arisen because the surgeon was unable to see it. This is the actual surgical drill that's used to remove uh, pituitary tumors through the endonasal approach. So it goes, it's minimally invasive. It goes through the nose to remove that bone and remove the tumor. And it's surrounded by optical fibers. And so the goal is basically to enable the surgeon to see both the tool tip and the structure that may be hidden by bone or other tissues in the same photoacoustic image. I am hoping to introduce this technology to say if this were the bone, the surgeon can operate as usual, business as usual, and not only see what's already available to him or her, but also see if the blood vessels may have shifted relative to the preoperative CT or MRI image and detect this shift and update where the incision or the drilling of this bone might be made. Drilling of the bone is necessary because we, are, uh, we have to remove the bone in order to access and gain access for tumor removal. And um, we can make our specialized light delivery systems compatible with any surgical tool. And in that case, we're not bringing any new surgical instruments, but we're bringing new imaging devices and imaging technologies like the optical fibers that need to surround the tool. In this case, you want to make sure that the fibers are creating a nice uniform optical profile because you, don't, you want to avoid any hot spots to avoid damage to whatever tissue might be uh, in the path of the, the laser light. And so to get this nice uniform profile, you want to make sure that you have a nice ring surrounding the tool. To get that ring, you need to know how many fibers are optimal. You don't want to use too few, but you also don't want to use too many. And so um, this is some of the innovation that's required to attach these specialized light delivery systems that we're developing in my lab to surgical tools. I like to know that whatever I'm working on has a real need, or it's addressing a real need and has a, a real tractable application.